Hey, everybody, and welcome to Second Sunday, or in this case, Second Thursday. Uh, life is going by pretty quickly, and so we get our we get our stuff done when we get our stuff done. Time is definitely been a challenge for me lately. Um, interesting, uh, big changes all around the world. And today, I wanted to bring you guys a very special Second Sunday Thursday. Um, and really kind of give you guys a couple of tools to navigate this kind of like new energy that we are all kind of dealing with. You know, it's funny, the end of March and the beginning of April is like that resurrection energy and also taxes, right? So death and taxes. And it can cause us to go up and down, up and down, up and down. And the more we get to know ourselves, I really think that that's what enlightenment is. I don't think that it is any spiritual scroll that you are handed for all your good deeds. I truly believe it is the more that you know thyself and the more that you can become yourself, all aspects of that, the more enlightened, lighten you up, be you become. And, and really, that's kind of what life is always doing with us, through us, with us, is compressurizing us. Do you really know yourself? Do you really know yourself? You know, and we are a collective that is taught away from ourselves very early. Matter of fact, it is actually taught to be quite a negative concept to really be with yourself the younger you are and to be and do you know what comes intuitively so we're kind of trained away from our intuition pretty early you know before the age of seven you are beginning to decide what is right and wrong about you based on the reflection and eyes of the people who are noticing you right so what does mom notice about you what does dad notice about you what gets you in trouble right what gets you appraise you know what gets you love what what gets you um what abandons you? You know, what do you do that, you know, seems to be rejected by people? And we start to build these conclusions of ourselves in our minds very early without really even judging whether it's right or wrong. We're just kind of building this understanding of ourselves through the eyes of everyone else. That's why life is so difficult because the older you get, and the more you read, you realize, wait, I'm supposed to be listening to myself. I'm supposed to be this genius. If I can access certain parts of my brain, I can change my neural pathways. I can utilize epigenetics to turn DNA on and off. What? Right? It's like, well, in order to be able to do all those things, you would have to know you, right? Where your switches are, where your programs are, where your downloads are hidden right where your true memories of self are not just your memories of this space and time you would have to have a very good inventory of everything that you are and really i mean i don't even think that we start to question that until like our late 20s early 30s you know we kind of look around at our relationships we see, you know, what's working, what's not working, where we have our voice, where we don't have our voice, where we feel safe, where we don't feel safe. And a lot of us have kind of buried a lot of that within. And that's just more of us that we don't know that we don't know. You know, it's, it's pretty impossible to judge someone for not knowing what they don't know that they don't know. Right. But what we have been taught to do is constantly check outside of us, ask outside of us, do outside of us to figure out what is inside of us, right? Do you love me if I change this? Okay, do you love me if I don't do this, right? And never really kind of just sitting down and saying, you know, what is it that I need and want? What is, what is it that really makes me feel unsafe? What is it that really makes me, you know, feel that sense of freedom within myself? And until we can get to that space on the self-realization journey, 
we really are constantly in a stage of kind of pain reward or what I call sabotage and reflection, sabotage and reflection. And that is the concept of this month's energy report. Um, you know, I'm not kind of telling you guys what's going on in astrology. You can feel it. You know, you can feel the energy changing daily. I mean, uncertainty is kind of your new normal at this point. You know, what's going to happen, right? Well, it seems so uncertain still that you have kind of acted like that child with the rain going on outside that's figuring out what to do inside, you know, build a fort, play with your friends, you know, virtually, you know, read a book, write a book, start a podcast, start a business, you know, rekindle friendships, get rid of toxic energy. We have all been very diligently learning how to work with our inside because the outside is so uncertain, which is honestly such a catalyst for all of us to be able to get back inside and remember how this whole thing works, all right? Because you really were designed, spirit and body, to be 80% non-physical, which means that the workshop of your imagination and your vision and your focus and your intentions was supposed to do not, you know, 80% of the work that you're here to do. 20% was then telling the body how to do it. And then the body practices and practices, and then it becomes the essence of the vision. And that, that has been like completely lost in translation. You know, it's like there's a lot of information missing from those big textbooks that we look at in our religious churches. Lots of information missing. The how to, right? How to learn this biological quantum computer that's ever changing and ever learning and ever adapting and ever remembering and ever refocusing. And if the conscious part of ourselves is unaware of what the computer is creating, we might find ourselves in resistance. So instead of talking about, you know, the resurrection energy this month or, or the Easter energy or, you know, the, the shadow work of what taxes represent. What I would rather do is kind of get into the root concept that, you know, we have kind of collective seasonal PTSD for everything that happens on this planet, you know, spring, summer, fall, winter, taxes, right? Valentine's Day, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Mother's Day, their birthday can all be very, very triggering. And the reason why is because underneath all those symbols of joy and celebration is usually buried pain, okay? And when we have buried pain or we have buried trauma or we have buried stories, then we most likely forget that they're there you know and so we act on what we think we're focused on what we think we desire what we think we're visualizing but we have to remember that everything within us is vibrating so even the buried stuff and this is where our self-sabotage comes from guys if you've been in my academy for the last i don't know 100 years feels like seven years or you're doing teacher training with me which is a practitioner training which i, I help you you know, remember that true higher self within and be able to bring forth your soul purpose or your divine purpose in, and be able to share with yourself in the world. If you're going through that program, you're very aware of the concept that I'm talking about today. But otherwise, if you're seeing me for the first time, going, who is this weird chick? You know, hello, Jessica Alstrom, creator of the Quantum Method Academy. We're a virtual international company, company and academy that basically teaches the art of epigenetics, energy medicine, right? Timeline work, which was like fragments, quantum physics, quantum biology, and the understanding of this concept of like the me, myself, and I, which is, you know, my body, my ego mentality, and my higher self all working in unity to create virtual reality. So going back to this idea of sabotage, okay, we've all done it. We all watch ourselves do it. That's the funny part is the more aware we become, the more we're like witnessing ourselves do it. And, you know, 80% of the time we're like, wow, this is happening, like right in front of my eyes. And I have no motivation to actually stop this because I really think that that's part of evolution is first you have no idea you're doing it. 
Then you think someone else is doing it. Then you see yourself doing it without really stopping yourself. And then that fourth like level is, okay, I have a choice here. And that's where I am going to biohack and take you guys today. Because if you can witness yourself sabotaging, you're really close to being able to participate in choice of that. It may take a while. You may have to watch yourself sabotage, you know, 25, 30 times before you're like, okay, I think I'm going to step in here and kind of navigate what's going on a little bit more. So first, I, first and foremost, I want us all to kind of take stock and accept, you know, that's a true definition of love right there, that word acceptance, that I'm still sabotaging certain areas of my life. You know, I may be letting money flow. I may be letting, you know, my health really vibrate. I may be bending time these days, but relationships, I find myself so sabotaging or maybe it's money or maybe it's health or maybe it's time, right? These are all kind of like platforms of reality that we like to play in. And you all notice you do it. I do it. We all do it, right? There's no judgment in it. Witnessing ourselves do it. And then we get to this next step of awakening where we go, hmm, well, I'm supposedly in the fifth dimension and the fifth dimension is all about choice. So how about instead of acting out the way that I always do, which is sabotage, whether it's intentional or unconscious, whether it appears to be coming from yourself or someone else, we can kind of interrupt the flow and experience of the natural state of where sabotage takes us and we can kind of turn towards the flow and begin to have a conversation because trust comes from being able to talk to you yourselves right I me mean, myself and i before you make that phone call to your psychic before you call your mom before you call your best friend you know, advice should first come from within. And if that is an instant, which it usually isn't, depending on how far away of a relationship you're having with yourself, it may take a little bit of time. It may have to come through a synchronicity. It may take from someone reaching out to you and saying, hey, I was just thinking about something. And you're like, yes, but us needing to have the solution to our problem instantly and it feels very unavailable to us is a root childhood program, right? Because all solutions are accessible in your own field. You created the problem. You also created the solution because you're a quantum being. You are yin and yang. You are dark and light. You are the problem and the solution. You are two heads of that coin, heads and tails. Sometimes you got to flip over the coin to see the solution instead of making the phone call. Now, because we've been so taught away from our internal guidance system and we've been so, so taught away from our intuition that we use people, places and things to kind of like bump up against and try to figure out what our intention is telling us or our, our intuition is telling us through reflections. And I always call that post manifestational awareness, because after something manifests, then you can see where you're vibrating. Right. But there is a quicker way and there is a more solid biohack here available because once we become aware that we are sabotaging we are also aware that we possibly have a choice here but we have to dive into the sabotage itself we can't just go right to the solution we've got to what i call unpack it a little bit right so in your mind just kind of go on a journey with me and find the last time you can remember unintentionally or intentionally sabotaging something you really thought you wanted okay and this could be from picking a fight with somebody this could be oversleeping and not showing up this could be overspending when you know you have something very you know important coming up this could be not taking care of your body when you know you're going to need your body right it could it could be it could be that you have finally some free time and you just kind of piss it away you, you choose. We all have our stories. We all have our kind of ways about us. And it really has nothing to do with anything other than, you know, what's going on in your reality. So find one in your mind that you can kind of like remember and kind of go back to that thought of what was going on in your life, you know, what you were doing, you know, what was about to happen. And 
understand that a lot of times self-sabotage is extremely, probably 90% of the time, unconscious. You're not doing it on purpose. You know, you've probably not done much of anything negative on purpose in this life, but we have done things, right? We have created things. We have experienced things. We have said yes and no to things. So we are participating. So we do have to accept and acknowledge that. So think back the last time you participated, whether consciously or unconsciously, a sabotage that was in your life. Now, sabotage is a very interesting experience to your collective consciousness of the me myself and i because usually what's followed by sabotage is shame and guilt right oh my god how am i so stupid shame you know i'm so sorry i let you down guilt you know i'm the only one that didn't show up at the meeting humiliating right and then if we're if we're displaced enough we might even get to resentment how come nobody called me right or we become fearful, which is my definition as anticipation of loss. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna lose my job. How did I oversleep? This is just one example. Hopefully they're tracking me. So what we usually do with a sabotage is go into defense, okay? We take a sabotaging experience that we are creating, may not feel like we are, and we'll jump right into the defense or the, de or the shame or the guilt, or the blame of that experience, right? And this is where we go further unconscious because once you get into those lower loss frequencies, right? And there's one, two, three, four, five, six of them, right? The original loss or grief, under that we have fear, anticipation of loss, okay? The humiliation, which is all about our pride and how we're seen. You know, it's how people see us, how we see ourselves. Shame and guilt is underneath that. How do I feel about what I am or not, right? Guilt, this feeling of letting others down, right? And then obviously, if we can't really stomach any of those vibrations and we really need to defend because we're feeling so disempowered, we might get into resentment, which is a very fun place for the ego to be because it doesn't have to take any responsibility. It gets to feel anger, which makes you feel alive. And then you get to kind of soothe and simmer on how it isn't your fault and what you are doing that's right. And it becomes kind of this delicious, intoxicating place where we justify our reflections and our manifestations. We all have done it. There's no judgment in it. It's just how human nature was designed for us to not know ourselves very well. And so when we're in those vibrations or those frequencies, we take a sabotaging program from the past that was inherently neutral because it was just running in your biofield. And then we put meaning to it. And anytime you assign meaning to anything, it becomes solid. Right. If you stay neutral over an idea or concept, it stays percolating in the quantum field as a possibility. But if you assign meaning to that or a judgment to that or a blame to that, then it becomes real. OK. And real in the identity of kind of that that platform of spirit being steam. Right. Percolation of the quantum field of possibilities and then choice and decisions and intentions is the idea of spirit moving water around to shape itself and the solidification of our actions decisions belief systems and choices is that kind of is the ice effect so when i assign meaning to my sabotage it becomes solidified in my field solidification equals belief system okay so now i have a belief well, it wasn't my fault. Okay, I don't have to feel my sabotage. I get to feel that you didn't wake me up in time, right? I get to feel that it's that it's your fault, right? Oh, that feels so much better. Whew, take a breath, right? Until we become more aware of ourselves and we start to have a relationship with ourselves, and we're like, that doesn't even feel good to be upset with you. Like, it doesn't get me anywhere. And all it does is it causes you to project your defense mechanisms on me. Now for six hours, we're talking about you know, how you hurt me and I hurt you and how you let me down and I let you down and we're getting nowhere other than exhausted. All right. Anyone who's been in relationships knows that story. So 
the idea of this conversation within yourself is going to be your greatest biohack. And your greatest biohack for self-sabotage is to turn self-sabotage into self-assistance. And you're like, okay, Jess, how do I do that? Well, I'm going to tell you. It's super easy. And sometimes what I've noticed is teaching the more easy concepts to very brilliant, spiritual-minded people causes the deer in headlight syndrome. Matter of fact, I just taught a class a couple of days ago in, in my academy. And to me, it was like, you know, fourth grade understanding. And it was like, it was a two, it was a two simplified concept. And so I'm like, wow, we have just made everything so hard. And in this world, everything is inherently simple and everything is inherently neutral until we assign a meaning to it. So how we turn to self-sabotage, right? Into self-assistance, which is what we would all love. Like, give me some help here, right? Let me work through me to create my desires. Let me work with me to turn my vision into reality. Let me work with me to be seen and heard. And let me work with me to feel safe. Safe is usually the trigger behind self-sabotage. Usually when I am kind of pulling the roots with my students and my clients, and I notice a self-sabotaging behavior that is chronic or unconscious, I look for the safety issue, right? It's not safety of, you know, locking your doors at night. It's safety to be yourself. It's safety to be accepted. It's safety to, you know, um, be free. It's safety to be authentic. It's safety to, you know, have your own opinion, to be different, safe to be the weirdo, safe to take a chance, safe to live a life that other people don't understand, safety to live without safety. There's one. And a lot of us are good at that. Our friends and family think we're absolutely psychotic. What? You don't have health insurance? Oh my gosh, you took out your 401k to do what? You know, climb Mount Bubalega, right? I can't believe it. Have you thought about your future? Have you thought about your kids? Hey, is that safe when you want to share your hopes and dreams with people who are in a constant fear program around you? No. So it may cause you to act as a block for your own safety issue. Okay. And the ways that we block our own forward motion is usually about a million different ways. Okay. There is no like one way you're sabotaging. You know, you could really say, I'm ready for love, right? I'm ready to find my soulmate. I'm ready to connect with that other person and build a partnership. I am, I'm ready to be that partner for them. I am ready to experience that. Right. And so the whole universe is like, we hear you loud and clear. But if I were going to sit down and ask you, OK, tell me about your old relationships. Tell me the last three. How did they start? You know, what went wrong? How did it end? Right. Because everything that ever was or ever is or ever will be or ever could be or ever witnessed or ever happened to anyone else is vibrating in your bodies, right? So you could have witnessed someone else getting hurt in a relationship. You could have watched mom get beat down every day. You could have watched dad leave. You could have watched, you know, your brother just lose his wife from cancer and be devastated. You could have been, you know, in a narcissistic relationship where you felt very abused and you got out of it and you found self-love and you found your, you know, your own journey and you feel amazing, but the story of that experience still exists in your biofield. This is what creates self-sabotaging behavior, is not what you could be, or what you could have, or what you could create. Sabotage comes from what could go wrong again, right? What could happen? What could go wrong? How could I fail? again. So when we're dealing with sabotage, you guys, it's not like, why do I keep doing this? I need to stop doing that because now you're just shaming and guilting yourself, which is not very kind. So what you want to do is you want to kind of say, okay, here it is again. I witnessed it. I actually did it. Cool. 
no judgment. I accept it. Sit back. Where did it really, where did my behavior of oversleeping and missing that perfect meeting, where did that actually come from? Because I didn't just oversleep because there's no randoms in the universe. Everything, everything is pre-designed by the anticipation of future vibration and the recording of past vibration which means whatever has been recorded in the past is usually what is creating a momentum, a desire, and your motivation or lack of motivation in this now moment. So that forward motion is we're always asking. We're always asking. We're asking for enlightenment. We're asking for intuition. We're asking for our gifts. We're asking for love. We're asking for connection. We're asking for freedom. We're asking for abundance. We're ask, 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 right? Constantly, just by noticing what we notice, we're asking. You know, it's like even when you are comparing yourself to someone else, there is an ask coming from that inner child, like, oh, I would love to have it. Even though I'm in judgment of her having it or him having it, I'd love to have that. So that call is always radiating from you. Now, there's an opposite conversation going on that says, I can't have what I want. I can't do what I want. I can't say what I want. You know, I can't be who I want. And so if you like took the energy of that solid wall and you took the energy of your fast moving, asking and desire, which is like a Ferrari going 180 miles an hour directed into a brick wall, that would be your experience of sabotage, right? Because you're asking and asking and asking and asking and asking and what shows up right is you hitting your own pain and like i said the more numb we become the more it feels like procrastination sabotage the more numb we become or jaded we become by our own pain the more like depressed we become or you know we we spend our time in in kind of like that procrastination, lack of motivation, and then hurry, 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 get it done, but don't really have our heart and soul in it. We're not really present for it. That would be a self-sabotaging behavior. Or, you know, choosing a partner in this now moment where we haven't unpacked our past pain would be future sabotage because I'm always going to take myself with me no matter where I go or what I change. Everything that is encoded inside of me will go everywhere I go. It will live in every relationship. It will breathe in every conversation, even if it's through kind of that convoluted back end, passive aggressive or whatever way it can get through. It will be birthed in every platform I exist because it is part of me. So until we can accept that, OK, I am in desire. Of a relationship at this time i am going to give my heart and soul i'm going to be present i'm going to be allowing we also have to say and i'm willing to fully accept that i have been hurt before that i have i have i've been damaged that there's parts of me that feel so lost if we do not kind of turn around and look also at our prior experiences, not to take score, but to kind of take stock because you're including all of you in every vibration you are emitting. So if you're asking for a new couch, let's just use a very random non-triggering manifestation and you find the exact one you want online, you place the order, you pay the money, right? Done, okay? Where is the sabotage there if you don't get the couch? Well, maybe in your desire, you forgot that the last time you bought something online, you know, some, someone sold your identity and sold your credit card. And so basically stole from you. And so your body sees that anticipation in this future moment. So it may interrupt the whole manifestation because even though there is that desire, 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 it's like a child crossing the street and there's a car coming and mom's got to pull you back. So part of you is always in protection of you. So there's where self-sabotage comes from. It is a protection of failure or pain disguised as behavior. That's it. 
That's all it is. At the root of every self-sabotage is protection. And why are we running a protection program? Because we don't feel safe somewhere. Just because we want to be in a relationship does not mean we are not bringing the 15 relationships, abusive relationships with us. So I just really kind of wanted to nail that in so that you can kind of get your own premise of why things are manifesting back to you in the form of self-sabotage, even though you're saying, well, no, I, I paid for the couch and I hit the online button and, and you know, I paid the money. And how is that self-sabotage, Jess? Well, the reaction that you got back, the manifestation that you got back was that, you know, you didn't get the couch or it was on back order for 15 weeks and now they can't find your money. You will manifest a similar feeling and a similar meaning to the last time something happened. That's why I'm saying birthdays and taxes and Christmas and all these things that we have, storylines of, of ways to unify and create on planet Earth are usually linked with some sort of loss or pain. So we find ourselves getting excited for something and then losing the momentum as it gets to the finish line and either not desiring it when we get there or you know, creating some sort of instance so it breaks apart or giving them the power to break it apart by you not standing in your truth, right? So there's so many, so many ways. I mean, we could do an entire workshop on, on just self-sabotage, but I want to give you guys some tools moving into this, this like first part of the year. You know, we are really in this, this birth of this new energy and now we're kind of learning how to walk in it and talk in it and breathe in it and and do all of that with constant change very similar to you know a child in the early years where you know every week you look at them and their body looks different and they're changing constantly this is you adapting and remembering more and more of yourself so the only biohack that ever needs to be um, utilized in a self-sabotaging experience is to instead of having the moment and either going into fear, humiliation, shame, or guilt, or resentment, take a breath. Okay, wow, this didn't happen the way I wanted it to happen, right? This person didn't show up for me. I didn't show up for this person. I forgot, they forgot, right? What I wanted didn't come, you know? What I wanted to give them, I couldn't give them. Whatever sabotage you can think of, right? And you can even go back and play the last one in your mind to practice. You don't have to wait for a new one, right? Because again, a lot of times the self-sabotage is that intoxicating flow of an old pattern that you don't realize you're acting out until after the fact. So what we want to do is kind of go back to the last self-sabotaging experience and do this as a kind of a... a like a replay, like a like a soul fragment collection or a regression process, right? And all you do is go back to the last one and then think about what you chose to feel right after that sabotaging moment, right? Okay, I slept in, I missed my appointment, right? I've been waiting for this appointment for like six weeks. I slept in, I missed it, right? What did I do right after that? First, I went into like fear that I'm not going to get another appointment, anticipation of loss, right? Then I started feeling guilty because like, why am I such an idiot? Humiliation. Like now I've let down everybody. Okay. And now I'm super pissed off because, you know, someone should have called me. So I instead could go into all of these emotions and now I've assigned meaning to either perpetrator or victim. So if I want to play the victim, it's somebody else's fault. If I want to play the perpetrator, I'm asking for forgiveness. Please, please, please. Right. So you can see perpetrator and victim there. But what you could do is you could find your neutrality point. OK, well, there it is. Self-sabotage. Watch myself do it or didn't. Right. Conscious or unconscious. doesn't matter. Right, I'm going to go over to the higher frequencies. And first, let me accept it. I sabotaged again. OK, now saw that self-sabotage comes from protection. It's actually a form of love to protect you from losing again, failing again, you know, making the same mistakes again. Like we're so stubborn, you know, we have to utilize the energy of sabotage just to stop ourselves from that 100 mile, 8 mile and 80 Ferrari that we're driving. We hit the wall anyways because we're stubborn, but we'll eventually learn. So what we do is accept it. Okay, I sabotaged. Wow. 
I am very much in protection of myself. It's like a mother, mom, I get it. You love me. You got to let me breathe. Okay. I protected myself there. Okay. I can accept that I was in a self-protection. Why, why would I be protecting myself? Again, notice how I'm talking to myself here. I'm not calling somebody. Why would I do this? I'm not spending the money on therapists. Why do I do this? Am I taking a pill so I forget that I do it? I'm not smoking something so I don't get mad at myself for doing it. Right? It's like I'm just asking myself, where, why would I be so protective of myself that I would oversleep for an appointment that I've been waiting for forever? Right? So say you're, I don't know, about to sign a big contract or something you know that's very exciting that doesn't feel fair based at all that feels like nothing could go wrong and nothing could happen from it where do you find the, the safety program there or where do you find the fear there or where do you find the protection there you might have to dig because it may not be what you think it is it may be the feeling that whatever you're about to do is going to give you okay so if the thing you're going to do, create, or become gets sabotaged, go to after, like, okay, what would I have felt like if I would have manifested what I did want? If I didn't oversleep, how would I have felt? Oh, I would have felt very authentic. I would have felt very free. I would have felt like, I have so much courage and that I stood up for myself. I would feel fulfilled. I would feel happy. Right? And you're going, why is that scary? Yeah, I hope you like my gestures here. So let's be honest. When we were little and we were authentic, we got nailed for it. Right? We were shining bright. Look at me. I'm so you know, awesome. You're showing off, right? You're worthless. You're incapable. You're not smart enough, right? So as we're going to the other side of our manifestation of desire, we're going to meet our true selves. Well, what happened the last time you were really being authentic? What was the last time that you're really putting yourself out there? What happened? Because it isn't the achievement of creating a new company or launching that podcast or writing that book or getting married or having a kid or buying a house. It, it, that's not what I'm talking about here. You're not sabotaging buying a home. You're sabotaging what home means to your body. So if home means to your body abandonment, rejection, punishment, being trapped, no freedom, you will sabotage that home no matter how perfect it appears. Because you have a meaning inside of you that says home is not where the heart is, home where the pain is. And even though your conscious is going home is what I'm gonna create and I'm this new version of myself and I love myself and I've got the money and I've got the time. And you're, you're literally going up of two opposing forces. So unless you accept the resistance within, look at it, accept why you are protecting yourself through sabotage. And here's your secret, secret formula. Appreciate it. Okay. I sabotaged not being at the signing or not signing the contract and oversleeping because I was really just protecting myself. How many times have you not told your kids something so that you could protect them from something? Okay, so this is you not telling you that you're terrified of being in a home until you sabotage it because it's like, I didn't, I couldn't tell you. You were going to do it anyways. You're so stubborn. We're going to go anyways. So I had to wait for the last minute, you know, and, and force you to oversleep or force you to, you know, show up in a way that is not you or have someone else do it. Because, you know, you are so powerful that you are the manifesting current of the universe. Your blood is literally magnetic. And through the, the actual conversation between spirit and body, which is done in the blood, you can manifest other people acting as sabotage as well. It's not always directly you. 
It is you manifested in the fractals of near consciousness we call law of reflection. reflection. So someone else can act as your own saboteur. And we experience that a lot. That one is harder to find. But we'll notice that we won't go into shame and guilt so easily if someone else does it to us. We'll jump right to resentment. So our job is to use self-sabotage as like that self-acceptance and that help. All you do is turn around. Okay, last time I sabotaged, got it. Okay, no judgment. I did what I did. Okay, can't stick it back. I love you. Thank you for protecting me. Let me find what I could be protecting myself from. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I've been hurt like 20 different times. That's why I keep attracting, you know, the wrong guy. Okay. Because in my body, I don't choose the right men or whatever. Whatever your story is. That's not my story right now, but that used to be my story for a long time. Okay. And we are unconscious of the sabotaging program to stop ourselves from failing again, stop ourselves from hurting again, stop ourselves from hurting other people, stop ourselves from being hurt. And that sometimes looks like isolation, right? It can look like nobody's showing up for you. So you stop, turn around, look at the sabotage, full acceptance. I see you. What are you protecting me from? Why would I be protecting myself? What is the meaning here that I assigned? to the story of how I would actually feel if I got what I wanted. Well, the last time I got what I wanted, you know, somebody died or I lost something or I had to move away from the last home I loved or the last home I, I really felt safe was taken from me. You will always find a root body, body, not higher conscious spiritual you, body safety program running. Underneath all sabotage is a safety issue. And how kind, like how kind can we be towards ourselves? Okay, I'm just protecting myself. So what is the best apology? Change behavior. So if it's just, wow, I didn't even realize that, you know, because I've been hurt so many different times that right before I get that happiness that turns into a blind side, I'm just stopping myself from getting happy. I'm just stopping myself from the finish line. Because when I do have success, I'm ridiculed or judged or unappreciated. So why don't I just keep myself from success and keep a sabotaging program going so I never really get hurt again? This is where most of us have been because we're living very mediocre realities because we never let ourselves even get to the theater of well, okay, I'm going to be authentic and I might be attacked for it on the other side of this. You know, a lot of people are not clapping when you do well. So a lot of times you don't do well is because you don't want to hurt people's feelings by having success. You don't want to abandon people by your own growth. You don't want to let people down by having too much. Because when you were little and you were too much, it was more than anyone could handle. And nobody wanted to be in the same room with you. But when you're miserable, misery loves company, you're surrounded with people, places, and things. So you keep yourself right before the finish line in money, time, relationships, and health. Because to experience the true finish line would bring back all the pain of where you first lost it where you lost your freedom, where you lost your abundance, where you lost your ability to be authentic, where you lost your loves, right? Where your heart is broken. You will have to revisit that. So the pain body or your, your biological, you know, um, Google of pain inside of you is going, no, no, she's getting too close to happiness, sabotage, right? Because then we'll move back into a lower frequency and deal with a less painful experience of the original loss. So I won't have to lose myself again because I'm truly authentic. What I'll do is I'll just present you, right? Or I'll start feeling guilty that I missed another opportunity. So turn towards, hopefully you're tracking me, except I was sabotaged, big deal. Sign no meaning to it. You know, I must be doing this for protection because I love myself. What am I protecting myself from? There's your biohack. Okay. When was the last time I was attempting to do something like this that was going to give me a feeling 
that went bad. Okay, good, found it. Great, now let's turn self-sabotage into self-assistance. Okay, best, bet, you know, best apologies, change behavior. How could I show up differently? Instead of going into resentment, shame and guilt, judgment, you know, lack, loss, suffering, denial, depression, procrastination, what could I do differently? How could I show myself that it is safe for me to have, be, or do? How could I? These are your questions. Every time you ask you a question, it's definitely, a, it's, a, it's a form of hypnosis because, you know, the observer is asking the other parts of you questions that only the other parts of you could answer, you know? And this is kind of the act of a mentor like myself or a life coach where we're asking certain questions, not for us to give you the answers, but for us to resurrect a different part of your body, soul, mind, field, to bring forth how you really feel about the question that you're asking because you have all of the data in you, right? I can only mirror conscious that for you. I cannot pull it from you. I can just show you the mirror so you can find it yourself. And I may say things to help reflect it back, like in this conversation, helping you see from a different lens that you're never ever not getting what you want from the universe, the universe is always providing what you want. You are usually 99.99% of the time in the way. Why? Because happiness isn't real and love means pain and money means fear and time equals aging. Whatever we want, whatever we have created, we've all done this very differently. So, First, accept, no judgment. Do not go into the shame, the guilt, the you know, resentment, the humiliation. Don't go into fear. Okay, it is what it is. It's just a program running. I'm aware of it. I see it. It's from the past. It's protecting me from what? Okay. I see what it's protecting me from, right? If I keep finding the wrong person, then I won't have to experience finding the right person and losing the right person again like I did when my dad left or something, right? Oh, okay, doesn't make total analytical sense, but I can vibe with it, right? Now, what's the best What's the best apology for myself? Change behavior, how could I show up differently? And your how do I show up differently comes from, how can I feel safe doing this? Really, how do I feel safe doing this? Okay, we're about to buy a house, right? And house, House has meant home, home has meant loss, loss has meant pain. This time we want home to feel an experience of connection, unity. So instead of rushing into the excitement of buying a home, we're gonna slow down a little bit. We're gonna make sure that we're doing it how we feel safely, maybe taking more time, maybe doing some more shadow work before we go sign those contracts, change behavior, whatever you need to do have the conversation that you need to have before you move in, you know, give yourself what you need to give yourself time, patience, encouragement, acceptance, love, appreciation. You know, this would be a way for us to, instead of sabotaging right before the finish line, be able to take the time and really step back into our safety program and that's like that analogy of the arrow that has to go back a little bit before it can spring over the finish line as a catalyst. Because think about it, you go, yeah, but just it's gonna take time. I wanna buy this house right now, okay? And I said, well, let's just face it. You're gonna sabotage it anyways. So you're going to be starting at the beginning and doing this all over again, or, and that's gonna take a lot more time than this, or right before that finish line, Right before that wedding day, right before you close on that house, right before you sign that contract, right before you make a choice that's going to change you. Step it back and say, is there any safety programs running, right, that I can find? Or where is my normal sabotage here? What do I use? Okay, let me kind of unpack it a little bit, spend some time with it. You're like, no, oh, that's taking too long. Trust me. Slow down to speed up. All right. This is how 
it truly works quantumly because if I take myself very, very quickly with all of my baggage, my baggage will arrive at my destination before I do because it's energy and I'm matter. So my baggage arrives at the party before I do, right? And I step into it unwillingly, not realizing it's already there, even though I ran really, really, really fast to outrun it. How did it beat me there? Because it's energy. Energy is faster than matter. So anticipation of knowing who and what we are. Okay, I've never been allowed to be authentic. I'm never allowed to speak my truth. I'm never allowed to be able to do these things. And now I'm in a position where I could. So let me accept the fact that I've had a lot of pain doing this before. And I, I may have those sabotaging thoughts, feelings, because a lot of times it can just be thoughts. Can I trust this person? Is this person really the one? Is this house really all? It, do I really have the money? Those are also sabotaging thoughts because you are here to create your reality, not question what you got in the bank account. You're here to create your own reality, which means you're here to fall madly in love with everyone and everything without worrying about who's going to hurt you. And if you are worrying about those things or thinking about those things, it's coming from previous pain that will eventually protect you through self-sabotage. So your way through self-sabotage into self-assistance is to be very kind, loving, and aware of the things that have hurt you in the past that you have done when you were your true self. Authentic, speaking, talking, being free, spending money. You know, those were the times where you usually got in trouble or belittled or hurt or robbed or stolen or cheated on. And so that pain is sitting in your body going, remember, remember that hurt. And I know that I can't show you that because you're so far ahead of what's in this body, but I can actually project the sabotage to stop you so that you'll turn around and notice what you're about to create your new reality out of. And I'm going to leave you with this. You are creating your reality based on all aspects of your vibration, not your partner, not your mom. You think that they have some say in your reality. They really don't. You are building every fiber of your own creation out of all of you your hopes, your dreams, your failures, your pains, okay? So what building blocks you are bringing with you into the new job, into the new home, into the new relationship will consist of everything that is still present and everything that is in resistance and everything that is buried, okay? So when they start acting like the past, or when you start acting like the past, it isn't consciously anyone's fault other than programs that have now downloaded into your future because you're building blocks of your new life can from everything that you are, your belief systems, right? So the whole name of the game this year, especially in my academy, is 2021 is about unpacking our baggage before it unpacks us. And so we're pre-doing that in a lot of different types of classes. You know, we're, we're opening up the baggage of our relationships in the past so that we don't bring it with us in the future. We're opening up money baggage. We're opening up all this baggage. And it's, it's like walking into a dirty room. Ugh, it's jarring. It's overwhelming. But at least I'm not bringing it into a new relationship and having them unpack it at me where I have to defend the fact that it's even there. Okay. So self -ass assistance comes from recognizing, understanding with complete compassion that you have a safety issue running a program of protection that needs to be sat with, understood, you know, accepted, allowed for a moment, and, and then ultimately change behavior and uh, doing it in a way that makes you feel safe, right? That will completely end that sabotaging program. It will install safety in authentic behavior. It'll install safety with money. It'll install safety with time. And you won't find yourself running out of time. You f won't find yourself running out of money. Notice how that running out of 
is actually into, you're not running out of money, you're running into an old program of poverty. You're not running out of time, you're running away from the inner child who didn't have time. So you have to kind of look at yourself as a, a full system of creation rather than any circumstance anywhere having anything or any power over you because it does feel a lot like the universe sometimes does not have your back and that people don't really love you and that places aren't available for you and money isn't allowed and that is all part of pain in re-manifestation or re-stimulation of the past so if we present enough if we can witness our own sabotage we can also begin to have deeper conversations with our subconscious and our unconscious to move into awareness, acceptance, allowing, understanding, passion, appreciation, change behavior. And then take your time acting out different behaviors that are based in you feeling safe. Because if you can feel safe doing the thing that feels the most exciting, and usually what we're trying to do is run into it like we gotta make this happen tomorrow we gotta make this happen tomorrow this has to happen now and you know why you want it to happen so fast because you're afraid it won't happen and you're afraid it won't happen because you have pain behind it happening so when we slow down go this is for me this is everything i ever wanted but i want to make sure that i am the person that i want to be on the other side of that finish line because if i'm still scared or vulnerable or weak then I'm going to take myself to the finish line with all that pain other than slow down like the tortoise and the hare, unpack a little bit, move into full allowance of this new adventure slowly by loving, not sabotaging, and then becoming the person that I want before I hit the finish line. You will not take all that baggage with you. Okay. So lots of awesome things going on. Lots of terrible things going on. Right? How do we look at it? There's lots of changes going on. There's no changes going on. There's, you know, people falling madly in love and buying, building new homes who are in the most abundant state they've ever been. And there's people in complete poverty and suffering and starvation. So it really is a universal game of the me, myself, and I that is happening collectively. So one last piece of advice that I can have that I always tell my students is then when you're really rebuilding reconciling, remembering, and becoming who you always desired to be. It really needs to be, you know, I would say 70%, 80% conversations with self. This will help you grow your intuition very quickly. This will help you uh, not be so afraid all the time because a lot of times you're not afraid of something and so you're excited about it. You go run and tell someone else and they're afraid about it for you and they also think you're an idiot for not being afraid of it. And now you're questioning your own intuition like oh all right you are here to create through the fibers and fabric of imagination not circumstances you are here to create your reality from choice of your heart's desires not what is allowed not what other people are doing not what you should be doing don't shit on yourself all right you are here to create for you the life that you desire because usually the life that you desire is a win-win for everybody because at the true heart of desire is unity it's freedom it's abundance it's prosperity it's joy and when you are in all of those things you spread it like wildfire so it affects the collective okay so hopefully you got a nugget hopefully you got 10 percent. hopefully you didn't fall asleep you know hopefully you got something from it and this has helped me a lot over the last few years of moving into that untapped space of manifestation of the things that I've always wanted, that I always seem to, you know, right when you're at the finish line, don't get, that's when I want you to pay attention to this, okay? Because you do deserve to have everything you've ever wanted, regardless of who you are, who you've been, what you've done, what's been done to you, because circumstances don't matter. Only state of being matters. The state of being is the building blocks that you use to build the fabric of your reality. So make sure you know what building materials you're building out of so you won't get so blindsided all the time. All right. Good luck. And I will see you guys next month.